fingers. He did. Like, how can you not gnaw those off? Those are, they look delicious. Of course, that would have been a crime if anyone would have attempted that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I, you know, this, I want to get it. I want to get into some of what, the Mississippi thing because yesterday I spoke with Ben Howe of Red State. He came on the show. I filled in for Glenn. I'll be filling in for Glenn tonight, 5 Eastern, 4 Central on the Blaze. And these flyers that were released in predominantly black precincts in Mississippi for Thad Cochran, uh, this is a lot of people have been doing a lot of digging. Ben was one of the first to do a lot of digging and discover that the groups, because you know how like when you see these flyers, they um, they say paid for by so and so, right? You've seen on the flyers paid paid for by X Y Z, and it turned out that well, and 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 there were some robocalls that were done as well, and robocalls, which basically were the the audio equivalent of going into these black precincts and shaking a clan hood out in the middle of the street, saying Chris McDaniel is going to come and put everybody in chains or something like that. I mean, it's basically what it was. So they had these ra- these flyers accusing. Uh, Chris McDaniel of being a racist and saying that, oh, he voted against this and he doesn't he voted against welfare and all. I mean, which was subtly racist, just the way that they were presenting it. And I've discussed this before. There are actually more white Americans on government entitlement than black Americans. But we're talking about Haley Barber, right? He's got his own stereotypes. And went out in their attempt to try to say that Chris McDaniel. uh by bringing in poll watchers to make sure that Haley Barber and Thad Cochran didn't cheat in their attempt to try to say that that was racist and voter intimidation. They actually were being racist, Thad Cochran and Haley Barber, by going into predominantly black precincts and proving every single progressive narrative about Republicans. Just these guys, these guys, they give the one lone story for the narrative. By trying to scare up votes from black Mississippi residents. So there have been uh, there so a lot of there's been a lot of investigation into these flyers. Like like one of the flyers. I wish I could show you on radio. One of the flyers. It's up at Paterico dot com. It said the Tea Party intends to prevent blacks from voting on Tuesday. (laughs) Chris McDaniel. I mean, this is I'm reading the flyer verbatim. Chris McDaniel and the Tea Party plan to prevent Democrats voting in the Senate runoff on Tuesday between Thad Cochran and Tea Party candidate Chris McDaniel. We know that the Tea Party uses, quote, Democrats as code for, quote, African Americans. Don't be intimidated. Let's turn out for all Mississippians and vote for Thad Cochran. That's and then they have Thad Cochran supported uh, Martin Luther King Memorial, supports public schools, supports Jackson Medical Mall, supports all Mississippians, supports Farm Bill. And then he has Chris McDaniel Tea Party made racist comments, which he never did. I mean, they're just like making it up at this point. Opposes federal funding of public schools. I mean, they stopped short of saying hates black people. I mean, they've done. And this was one of two flyers distributed. This was a mailer. And they didn't put on this particular flyer, they didn't put the disclosure like paid for. Now, on the other flyer, they actually they put paid for. uh, I forget what it is by um, Mississippi conservatives was one. And then actually, I'm mistaken. There's three flyers that went out. One was paid for by Mississippi conservatives. And then the other was I forget something else. Uh, The Mississippi conservative group. Uh, from what Ben Howe discovered in investigating this was like a brand new group that was just created like a couple of weeks ago. So there's question as to whether or not that their involvement could even be considered legal. And then their address, they listed a church address. Um, and there's a million other things that's wrong with it in terms of legality. And then it's um, apparently some of the ties uh, between the uh, church address and all of this, there's Haley Barber ties. And, and, and I mean, the Paterico.com gets, I mean, it gets really into the weeds in it. If you want to go and read it, it's a big story, but I suggest you do. So my, um, my problem with all of this is, it, and, and like, you know, I talked about this election yesterday with, I, I don't think that Chris McDaniel would be able to win. And I don't know if I, I definitely think it should be investigated. Oh, heck yes. It should be investigated. 
And I think Haley Barber should be publicly shamed. I think Thad Cochran should be publicly shamed. Because you know what they did? You know what they did? Haley Barber and Thad Cochran were calling anybody who didn't support Thad Cochran a racist. That's exactly what they did in Mississippi. Haley Barber, a.k.a. Colonel Sanders and Boss Hogg's love child, and Thad Cochran were calling everyone who did not support Thad Cochran racist. That's uh, the, the, the flyers that their surrogates put out, the robocalls that took place. Is the Republican establishment okay with attacking its most active part of the base or attacking actually the whole entire anybody who's conservative or conservatarian in thinking as racist because they didn't support that Cochran? Are there going to be penalties for that? Because if there aren't, the precedence that's going to be set is that the Republican Party in Mississippi will do it again. They think it's perfectly acceptable to take a progressive tactic and impugn the characters of thousands and thousands of people because they want their old, barely cognizant candidate to win another term and, and after he's spent four decades in that seat already. So, believe me, I completely understand when people are saying, well, I, I can't support Thad Cochran. I don't want Harry Reid as Senate Majority Leader, but I'm not going to condemn people for saying, you know, screw Thad Cochran, screw Haley Barber. I, I it just that what the more and the more I think about it, the angrier it makes me. If you um, over at JanaRadio dot com, I had mentioned earlier about uh, the gun box. I'm actually going to put a little video up on Instagram about this. I um, believe in safe storage and quick access, you know, and I have safes in that. But I also want to be able to keep a handgun right by my night, like on my nightstand. I want it right there by my bed so that if. You know, something hits the fan and things go down and, and you have to be able to protect my family. I want to be able to access my equalizer and be able to protect my family. And I want it to be safely stored. If you would like to have that in your home, I have the solution for you. It is it's the gun box. The gun box gives you that safe storage and quick access. It has an RFID scanner. All you got to do is scan it. Scan it. The, uh, you can put it like on a ring, a bracelet. They provide those. They, you can stick it on your phone, whatever. You can swipe it across the sensor, and the box opens in a second. You can also use your fingerprint. It has. It gives you the option of 360-degree biometric uh, scanning as well, so you can just use your fingerprint. This thing is made with aircraft-strength aluminum alloy. There's no good into it. It has an audible alarm on it and you can get it with GPS tracking. The thing is, is that this gun box was designed by a family, by a dad, for his family. And it keeps your kids safe. Even as you're teaching them using the Eddie Eagle and Project Child Safe and all of that, this gives you that added peace of mind. And, you know, if you have people over your house or if your kids are too little for gun education programs, this keeps your kids safe from the thing you used to keep your kids safe. And this technology-based solution, it keeps family safe, and it protects our 2A rights. Safe storage, quick access, so you can defend responsibly. TheGunBox.com. Get it today. TheGunBox.com. We've got headlines up next. This is The Dana Show. Talk lines are open now at 866-455-9797. This is The Dana Show. So something happened in soccer. I'm not I'm not watching it. Uh, Ann Coulter's column, by the way, on the World Cup is hysterical. I don't, it's not, here's the thing. I enjoy watching people watch soccer more than I enjoy watching soccer. I don't hate soccer. Someone's like, why do you hate soccer? You're such a horrible person, Dana Lash. Why do you make fun of it? Stop it. Stop it right now, you hateful, hateful person. I just, it's not that I, I don't hate it. I just don't like it a lot. Personally. You can like it. I'm told I'm not a fascist I'm not a fascist progressive. I am totally I'm not gonna be like, I don't like soccer, so I'm going to ban it from the televisions. I'm not like that. I don't care if it's on or not. I just I don't, I think it's maybe, it's more fun to play than watch. You know what I mean? There's like games that are like that. They're just more fun to play than watch. 
I just do you get this? Is is that how you view it, Kevin, or do you enjoy watching it? I wanted to watch the game today because just because the United States versus Germany, which they lost one nothing. But I'm and that's it's not my favorite.